Good evening, viewers from West Musgury to Duhallow and to McCroom. I am Keir Fitzgerald, your presenter for this evening. I hope you enjoy the programme. I now hand you over to Pat O'Connell for the news. Hello and welcome to this week's NTV News, Information and Sports Desk. Uh, this week, starting last Monday, saw the introduction of some new uh, parking laws in McCroom. Um, these were introduced in order to make sure that the traffic will flow through the town on a uh, more in, in easier method than it was done all along. And uh, some parking spaces have been removed. Uh, and for example, we give you a down rear view that are three spaces removed. On the main street, now there's no parking from Chapel Cross or there, right up to the post office. Uh, there were two spaces removed in Castle Street. And the remainder of the spaces there now have become a uh, pay parking area. And there were three spaces removed on New Street. So uh, hopefully, as I say, this will ease the traffic flow to the town. And it, it will encourage, hopefully, more people to come in and shop in the, the town if it's easier to, <coughs> to drive through. And McCroom is fortunate enough that it has uh, ample off-street parking available to people who want to come into the town. There's the Town Council car park below in the Fair Green. There's also Town Council park, car park in Massey Town. And Super Value have their own car park for their own customers, their own off balance place. So, again, um, as I said, this came into operation last Monday. And since uh, you can see the improvement already with uh, traffic moving quite freely through the town at the moment. Now, uh, St Mary's Secondary School in McCroom, uh, they got the green light there recently for um, a new extension. Uh, Minister for Education, Mary Hannafin, has approved plans for the extensive refurbishment uh, of two main buildings and the construction of a three-storey extension. Now, St Mary's was one of only three schools in, in Cork to receive uh, funding. In, uh, in this uh, phase of, of, uh, of funding from the government. And the development will mean that um, all school accommodation will be housed in one building. And the plans include um, a technology room, language laboratory, general purpose room, storeroom, and canteen on the lower, f uh, that's on the lower ground floor. A new science laboratory, Demonstration room, preparation area, toilets and lift will accommodate on the ground floor. And the first floor will contain some new classrooms, mechanical drawing rooms and a library and a career guidance office. And Anne McGrath, the principal of St Mary, said that it's excellent news for all the people in McCroom and the area. And she's looking forward to going that the building will go ahead as soon as possible. So uh, that's a big boost there for St Mary's Secondary School in McCroom. Now, McCroom Senior Citizens, they would like to just remind you of the following events which will be happening in their centre uh, in the month of February. Uh, the first social of the year takes place on uh, next Tuesday night. That's February the 8th in the Father Ryan Hall, and Johnny McCarthy will be providing the music. Uh, teen sandwiches and cakes will also be provided, and everybody is welcome to come along uh, to the Father Ryan Hall. So this is the first social of 2005. And uh, Johnny McCarthy will provide, new, provide new music on Tuesday night next. Now, uh, also, every Tuesday morning down the Father Ryan Hall at 11 a.m., there's the Older People in Dance program. Uh, this, is an this is exercise to dance music and uh, very, very enjoyable. And we would encourage people to come along at 11 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. On Thursday evenings at 3 o'clock in the Father Ryan Hall, Again, there is uh, line dancing, and this is very, very popular, with um, good attendance here every Thursday evening. As I said, it's open to everybody, and if you wish to come along, please do so. And on Thursday night uh, at 8.30, there's the weekly bingo in the Father Ryan Hall. Again, uh, this is a nice evening for the elderly, and anybody who wants to come play a game of bingo, that's 8.30 in the Father Ryan Hall on Thursday nights. Now, uh, you can remember last year that uh, the senior citizens asked me to know that they were having a trip to uh, the west of Ireland and is going up to County Mayo. And um, they'll be staying in the Castle Court Hotel in Mayo for uh, five nights. Now, dates have been announced for this trip, and the trip will depart from on Sunday, May 
the 15th and returned to McCroom on Friday, May the 20th. Now, the all in price uh, for this uh, trip is 300 euros and it can be paid into the senior citizens. The deposit of 50 euros is required and can be paid into the senior citizens centre at Lucy's Day in McCroom. And as I say, uh, this includes five nights spent breakfast and four evening meals, and also includes the transport to and from McCroom to Westport. And it's great value actually for uh, if you want to get a breakaway for 300 euros. And during the five days as well, there's um, a proposed itinerary laid out with trips going to uh, Clue Bay Heritage Centre on Monday, and Tuesday there's a trip to Knox Shrine. Uh, Wednesday there's a visit to Richard Weston Pottery in Newport. And towards it in, it says uh, time to do your own thing around uh, Westport. And um, music is provided each night in the bar. So it's a very enjoyable, um, it seems to be a very enjoyable trip. And it's, as I say, it's a very good value of 300 euros. The senior citizens would also like to remind people that there will be a fire prevention talk by Keir Nodonovan of the Cock County Council Fire Department in the Father Ryan Hall on Friday the 18th of February at 2.30pm. And everybody again is invited to come along to this uh, talk, which will be very beneficial to people that are living in their own and to the older people about fire prevention in their homes. Now, McCroom Boy Scouts, they're having an investor uh, ceremony on Tuesday night next day of February in the Scout Hall in Cox Street, McCroom. And also on this night, Tommy Linnis, and Billy Horgan, who both won All Ireland uh, Scout Awards in Dublin recently, will be presented with their awards on this night as well. So that's next Tuesday night in the Scout Hall, uh, 8th of February, uh, an investiture ceremony taking place there. Now, um, the Twinning Association, they will be having 22 Italian students and five teachers coming to McCroom. Uh, in mid-February, uh, and they'll visit the three schools, the Mekigan College, Dinosaur College and St Mary's uh, Secondary School. Uh, they'll be visiting these three schools and they'll be in the McCroom area for one week, also taking trips into uh, Killarney and Blarney. And uh, it is hoped in that students from the three colleges will make a return vis visit to uh, Marcello Can Cassoni, which is uh, McCroom's twin town in Italy uh, in the near future. As I'm on about twinning, as we were talking to you last week about the St. Patrick's Week and the 25th anniversary of the twinning of McCroom and Bewbury. Anybody who is willing to keep people on that weekend, the St. Patrick's uh, Week, uh, would I please contact uh, Morel Kingston in New Street, McCroom, and she'll give you all the details. St. Mary's Secondary School, they'll be presenting a show called Hollywood on Wednesday the 9th and Thursday the 10th of February. Uh, on Saturday the 12th of February, they taught that Kevin McAleer uh, will be in his show in Chalk and Cheese. is at the Brody Gap and tickets are 15 euros. And all these tickets are here available at the box office at 0264793. I'd also like to remind you that uh, the Christmas pantomime, uh, that the video of this show uh, is now also available at the Brody Gap's box office. So anybody who's interested in buying a copy of the video, uh, you can do so at the Burley Gap box office. Now, that's my lot for you this week. Uh, as I said to you before, as I say always, if you have any news and information which you'd like us to uh, put on air for you, you would you please contact me, Pat O'Connell at Railway View McCroom, telephone 026 42023. Again, we'd like to thank you for watching. God bless. Thank you, Pat. Julie Wiseman will now introduce the trainer of the Cheltenham Gold Cup winner of 1996. The dream of every horse owner and trainer is to go to Cheltenham and win the Gold Cup. The year was 1996. The horse was Imperial Call, owned by Lissalan Farms and trained by Fergie Sutherland uh, of Killinardish, Macroom County, Cork. Um, Imperial Call was trained on the hills at Rossen Scalp and the hills of Arbullock in Jack Morris Murphy's point-to-point -point fields. Um, 
It is almost nine years since that wonderful sporting achievement, winning the Cheltenham Gold Cup, one that locals will never forget. This video serves to refresh our memories and to raise a glass to that great County Cork trainer and sportsperson, Fergie Sutherland. Our this video was recorded shortly after Imperial Call winning the Gold Cup and it gives us great pleasure to present to you this outstanding local achievement. And this will be shown next Wednesday at the usual time. And now let me introduce you to the trainer of Imperial Call, Fergie Sutherland, talking to his friend Jack Murphy. Number one, I, I just say, Fergie, thank you for the wonderful day and the time of Imperial Call winning the Gold Cup. It's my only time going to Cheltenham. The kick and the thrill and how I felt. I felt part of the owner of that house for you. He, he was schooling me up like this. And how important was my place to you for that, for that time? Oh, it was vital. Uh, we, we wouldn't have got through without you. Because uh, my, my, my place would get cut up. And anyway, the, the horses enjoyed going up your hill. It was a masterpiece. And... Uh, uh, it took a long time to get a horse ready for the Gold Cup. It takes a long time and a lot of work. And I know you were there, hail, rain and snow. And I thought you were a dedicated man. You must have been a master craftsman. That's all I say to you. And you had, a, you had an athlete and you knew you had him and you, you, you got him there. And fair play if you gave us all the great pleasures. You gave us great day. Well, yeah, th thank you very much for saying all that. But we were very lucky, too, that nothing went wrong that year. When nothing goes wrong with your horse, you can carry out your program as you mean to, and you end up with a fit horse, which we did. Yes, you're super. <clears throat> so you don't miss the you don't miss the kick out of it, or the buzz or anything, though. No. I, I I I miss uh, coming up to our bullock in the mornings and meeting you and Father Tom. <laughs> That's right, well, Father Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I miss those mornings. He used to look out for that horse every morning. Just he, did. Did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Fergie and John for coming tonight, and you can see the video next week. Tonight, Local TV is showing the second episode of the series, Strangers. Last week, we were introduced to the Ingle family, who have just bought the big house. They are very posh. And then another stranger, a hippie sort of person with long hair and a wreck of a van. We meet the local community, the Murphy family, the two O'Mara bachelors, the priest Father Byrne, and the postman Jack Fahey, a right curiosity box. You would not know what would happen. Oh, today my ship comes in, and today my life will change completely. Good morning, Jack, my good and honoured comrade. We got you in a happy mood this morning. You're not running a fever right here, huh? Indeed I'm not, Jack. As a matter of fact, I never felt better. You feel that fine fresh air. You know, I feel just like a ship happily drifting with the tide. We got now this might... Make your throat to your anchor for a small bit. Yeah, no. Is your ESB be laid there by the look of it? That's too trivial altogether, Jack, to worry about. Far too trivial. Harry, I'm getting worried about you. You'll want to take things easy. You know, I must be off. I hate delaying people. Okay. A ship okay, happily Jack. drifting with the tide. <laughs> Harry, I'd look out for the rocks if I was you.
Well, there's no doubt about it with the man that invented you and one stupid clown, surely. <laughs> the man that bought you, he was much better at that. Oh, dear. Hello, Khan. Long time no see you. Are you in trouble, John? Yeah, a small matter like no staff. Let me have a look. Couldn't staff the damn thing at all. Good man, Khan. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, you know, man. you're a gifted man if ever I see one. Yeah, well, no, you should not come with that. By the way, did I hear those bales for sale? Bales? They got a house, plenty of bales. How many do you want? Uh, about four. A hundred? No, 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 John, four thousand at least. Oh, God, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Uh, do you know what? I'd only have about five hundred. Is that all? Yeah, sure, I can take them off your hands anyway. One fifty, I suppose. By the way, yeah. is there an inside? Oh, Kate is there too. Uh, two pounds, can't. Good. I, I mean, I'm glad she's inside. Well, no, I always knew that you had a knife for a bargain. You know what? It is very cheap for good quality second class hay. Come on, see. Oh, come on in. You can see the girl, of course. Come on in. She's inside. And you know what? We do it all cup of hay anyway. Yes, come in anyway. <laughs> We have a visitor. Oh, welcome, Khan. Welcome. We haven't seen you for a long time. Got this younger looking you're getting early every time I see you. And the end says, before we there, you look like sisters. <laughs> you're only pulling my leg now, Khan. I'm going to the body chair. Sit down, Khan, sit down. Anna, wet a cup of tea. The kettle is riding there. God, that was a great dance to the night, Kate. We were really stiffy out. We make a fine combination. Oh, we do. Like oil and water. Ah, you shouldn't have such a bad opinion of your own dancing. Sure, we'll be my personal fortune. You make a fine dancer. Tea's ready. Come back the bales. You did so. Should they wouldn't sell? They wouldn't. Half of them that whole very well. It is thousands he wanted. But you, he couldn't do this with the price. Isn't that right, Khan? Uh, I suppose so. You wanted to see Anna, you said? Yes. I did. God, these cakes are nice. I baked them myself. Take another one. And I hear you have a way with children, too. Uh, Kate, pass the sugar. You're the oldest and the soonest to get married. By the way, Anna, are, are you doing anything Friday night? No, Khan, I'd say not. Why? Uh, my sister told me to ask you to know where you babysit from. She had to normally babysit for the sons. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, George rang this morning. He made a few inquiries for me. Oh, yes. Mining minerals, you know, that sort of thing. That's where he said the big money lay. But I must get some old surveys of these plants. You'd never know. Some very interesting plants, don't you think? Huh. Maybe you downing lessons won't go to waste after <laughs> all. <laughs> we had. I wonder if they're still in the market. Oh, sites will be pretty plentiful around here, but we'll see what offers. At the right price, of course. Oh, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We must get somebody to look at those bees. Those hives must be laden with honey. Well, I'll inquire at the local pub. 
That's where they tell me you get the best information, and who knows, they may even uh, know where there's a bee expert. <laughs> think you are. A flamingo or something. Oh, just relaxing the old muscles, Molly. Too great to relax the muscles. Oh, thanks, Molly. The Lord and Lady are viewing the manor. A nice way to talk about your employers, Jimmy Lynch. But you know what? They seem a bit high and mighty, all right, don't they? Did I hear her complaining to you about the breakfast this morning? <gasps> I prefer a continental breakfast myself. As if bacon and eggs weren't good enough for that one. So poor old George Catherine, he ate them every morning of his life. They never did him a sign of harm, not a bit at all, you know. God rest his soul. The likes of them don't know what's good for them. I've got to show you the finer arts of cooking. As if I had enough experience now. But you know, I could show that one a, a thing or two. Your tea seems all right then. Ah, spy brat, I say. But you know what? We want to stay on the right side of him all the same. Yeah. That is, Dad. Just passing through. Steph. Steph, you know. You'd swear to God there are about 20 of us there. Action stations. We have a company. They just arrived this minute. Glad you're out here this morning. What's up? I'm in a hurry because the brother wants the car. He's going to town. Oh, you better get. Morning, men. Morning, Tyler. Births and marriages are on the decline in Ireland. It says here, in the month ending June the 30th, there was a 2% decrease noted in the birth rate and a 3.4% decrease in the marriage rate. My God, if they'll give up dying, I'm finished. There's no fear of that anywhere, Father. <laughs> That's for sure, then. Had your man will soon be changing the figures in the marriage front around here by all the cones. Is that a fact? Yeah. My God, he don't have the grass grow under his feet. That's for sure. You mean, he has some girl in mind? Rumor has it anyway, Sean. And you know what they say? There's no smoke without fire. My God. It makes sense now. <laughs> no wonder he was in such good humor. But no, Sean, I thought you would be the odds on favor to be forced up the aisle. You better get a move on. Want to be off if we got pipped to the post. Have no worries in that respect. If I'll have my way, I'll be a non runner. Goodness, who was that? Did someone win the sweep in here a bit about? That's our new neighbours up in the Hadley house. Oh? Because I'd want to give them a call on my rounds tomorrow. You may as well call for that young hippie dead up in John the Mills place too, seeing as you're out at all. Another stranger? Mm -hmm. Because I'd want to be the first to call to him anyway. Mm -hmm. That's it. Can I give you a lift then? Oh, no. I'm okay. Thanks all the same. I'm nearly home now anyway. I just live in that lane there. How do you say? I'm Ellen Townsend. I've just moved to Scotland. Kate Murphy. I've heard about you. Have you settled in all right? 
Oh, the house is really a bit of a mess. There's a lot of work to be done, but I'm looking forward to it. I might give you a hand sometime. That is, if you need it. Oh, really? That'd be great. I may take you up on that. By the way, what's the nightlife like around these parts, in a way? Well, there's a pub in the village, the Hunter's Inn. Ah, uh, the crack is not too bad, really. So you may go there tonight. I'll have to be off. I see you, Kate. Goodbye, Alan. Uh, what did this blue area here refer to? Oh, the blue areas are considered to be the most likely deposits and also the more accessible. Oh. Also the more accessible. The red are considered okay. to be possible deposits, okay. which would take much more to determine the extent of them. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, yes. Yes, very interesting it is. Mm. Yes, very interesting yeah. indeed. Mm. Yes. Well, Mr. Hill, you know, you've been most helpful indeed, you have. Delighted any time. Oh, any indeed. Time. Oh, I'll be in touch with you surely. Yes, yes, indeed. It's a pleasure to do business with Thank you. Thank you, Gandhi. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh dear, surprise, surprise. Oh my God. And now we will show the second part of the Munifluck concert presented by Jim Murray Sr. Well now folks, uh, every man has his own problems and John Reardon here alongside me isn't without him today because John has a cow that's about to calf and his anxious to get away but before he do uh, go we're going to get a song from John and I was hoping to have a little chat with John later but you know, he might be able to come back to us later on but in the meantime he's going to give us a song and uh, a very fine song my only son was shot in Dublin thank you John over the night was dark and the battle over as I walked down O'Connell Street I stood alone where brave men perished and they have gone, they're got to meet. The first I met was the gray-haired father, searching for his only son. Says I, old man, there's no use searching, for it's up to heaven your son has gone. Oh God, he cried, I am broken hearted. Oh God, he cried, falling on his knees. I knew my son was too kind hearted. I knew my son would never yield. The next I met was a fair young maiden. Kneeling by her lover's side, she prayed to God, her heavenly Father, that he alone her love would guide. The next I met was the dying rebel, bending low, I heard him sigh, God bless my home in dear Cork City. God bless the cause for which I die. My only son was shot in Dublin, fighting for his country bold. He fought for Ireland and Ireland only. The harp and the shamrock Green, white, and gold. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, John Reardon. Now this time we have the senior set here in Monofluk and uh, we're going to do... Uh, how many parts are we going to do, Jerry? Three parts of the polka set again now this time. And um, it's bad manners, but I'll start with myself and my daughter Marie on this side. Jerry Mangan and Nell over here. Uh, Martin Mangan and Ina Tuig over here in front of me and Jack and Abby Healy all the way out from Mill Street today to join us in the polka set. And of course, to play the music on the back there, Teresa Tuig. So away we go now with three parts of the polka set. <laughs> Thank you. 
And after the racing some yes. video, chant something about. Four legs to go, four legs to stand, and every step he take, sure he cover a naked of land. The wool that grew on his back, it grew up to the sky, where the eagle built her nest and she learned her young to fly. Timmy Rambo Rambo Rikidi, Timmy Rambo Rambo Timmy Rambo Rambo Rikidi, he was slaughtered in the market there. <coughs> the wool that grew in his side, the wool that grew in his belly, it grew down to the ground. It was salt above in the hovelin for twenty thousand pounds. Timmy Rambo Rambo Rikidi, Timmy Rambo Rambo Timmy Rambo Rambo Rikidi, he was salt in the market <coughs> The wool that grew in his sides, it cost as much more, and thirty gallons of oil that came out of his matter of born. Timmy Rambo Rambo Rikidi, Timmy Rambo Rambo Timmy Rambo Rambo Rikidi, he was salt in the market there. The butcher that killed this ram, he was sunk to the belly in blood, and the girl who held the pail, she was washed away by the flood. Tim me ram bo ram bo re kiddy, tim me ram bo ram bo re, tim me ram bo ram bo re kiddy, he was salt in the market there. The lint of his puttings, they crossed over the main, and then told by the sailors that they were done back again. Tim me ram bo ram bo re kiddy, tim me ram bo ram bo re, Timmy Rambo, Rambo, Rikidi, he was sort of an architect. The length of his horns, they were 30 feet complete, with a gallery in top for the Protestants to preach. Timmy Rambo, Rambo, Rikidi, Timmy Rambo, Rambo, Timmy Rambo, Rambo, Rikidi, he was sort of an architect. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, alongside me here, I have a very well-known man in, in this locality and in many other localities by the name of Con Desmond. And Con is going to give us a song, and a lot of people will know Con, of course. A great horsey man, a great horsey man, Con. Man after my own heart. I used to be on a myself, Con, when I was a young fella, but in a different line to you. Of course, Con had a great sire uh, called Gold Coin, and sadly, we must say that a couple of weeks ago, uh, Gold Coin passed away. But he was a good age, Con, wasn't he? Before you, we give us the song, you, you, you'll tell he us. Was, he wasn't too bad, but there was a lot more than the money for it, between a hard look. A bit of hard look. Well, that's right. Yeah. Well, good enough anyway, but... Uh, yeah, he made a good few bob for you anyway, Con, didn't he? I can't find the point he No. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Con, uh, we're sorry to hear that uh, he passed away, but there was a lot of great folds, of course, came from, from Gold Coyne, and congratulations on that, Con, and, and sorry about the, the, the stallion. But anyway... We'll continue on the bright note now, and Con is ready to give us an old verse of the song. Thanks, Con. Right. At the foot of yon mountains, where the fountains dot flow, twas the greatest creation, where the soft wind dot blow. There lived a fair maiden, she is the one I adore. She's the one I would marry on the Red River shore. Now I asked her old father, would he give her to me? Oh no, sir, she won't marry a cow, I said he. So I jumped on my branco and away I did ride. To leave my own true love by the Red River side. Then she wrote me a letter so loving and kind. And in this letter those words you will find. Come back to me, darling, you're the one I adore. You're the one I would marry on the Red River shore. Then I jumped on my branco and back I did ride. 
to wed my own true love by the red river side. But her dad knew the secret and with twenty and four came to fight the young cowboy on the red river shore. Now I pulled my sharpshooter firing round after round until four men were wounded and several were down. Where's the use of an army of twenty and four when I'm bound for my true love on the Red River shore? At the foot of yon mountain where the fountains that flow to the greatest creation where the soft wind that blow there lived a fair maiden, she's the one I adore. And now we are married on the Red River shore. Good man, Con Desmond. Thank you, Con. Well done. Now, many thanks there to Con Desmond for a lovely song, The Red River Shore. Good man, Con, and good vice as usual. Now, over on my right here, I see a gentleman that uh, we'd like to have a little bit of a chat with. Con Kelleher. Con, how are you, Con? And, and welcome today, Con. Good man. Now, Con, you're a man that um, has been around a little while longer than me. And um, what do you think of uh, the carry-on today here now, Con, in, in, in this school? You're a great altogether. Yeah. Now, you went to the, the previous school, Con, didn't I, you? I did. Maybe you'll tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it was great. down the road from here, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great altogether. Right. right. And it was great here, too. Yeah. I came here, too, no? Did you come here, too? I did, yes. Good man. And... Uh, what kind of, can you go back now, Con, and think of the teachers we had long ago? You're not forgetful now. Well, right. Yeah. Um, so there was Master Desmond, anyway, and there yes, were yes, lots yes. of masters back along the line. Yes. I wouldn't be familiar with him because, as the fellow said, I'm only a blow him. Yeah, we have the favourite here now. We have the favourite here now, yes. yeah. And I see over there he's rustling up his bow. Oh, yes. He's yeah. going to give us a few old tunes on the fiddle in a minute. Good man, Michal. He will, of course. Now, Connie, maybe while we're with you anyway, you'll have an old round of a song before you have to go to the cows as well. Did they give out a punch? That's good. There might be another round too, but um, we might be going to the cows then. <laughs> now, we'll have an old rest of a song from Con. I'll tell you a story that happened one day. It was down by the galaxy so far, far away. Tis about a fair maiden whose age was sixteen. She would die for her colours, white, yellow and green. A bold black and tan was passing the way as by this fair maiden with colour so gay. With a look on his brow, he jumped proud from his steed. He was out far to capture white, yellow, and green. Will you give me those colours? This bull Bobby cried. Give me those colours and do what is right. I will not arrest you, oh, that's nothing mean. If you'll give me those colours, white, yellow, and green. I won't give you those colours, the fair maiden cried. Not till your blood and mine will assemble and die. I dread not your rifle. Oh, that's nothing mean. I won't give you those colours, white, yellow, and green. It 
It was early next morning in Tipperary town. From the Galtee mountains, this fair one came down. Her poor heart was aching, it was plain to be seen. That morning, Max Sweeney had died for Sinn Féin. And it's up, Michael Collins, his colleagues as well. Independence for Ireland, or oh England to hell. The release of our prisoners is plain to be seen. And the fair maiden bannered white, yellow, and green. Well done, Con Kellogg. Well Thank you very much indeed, Con. Grand song. <laughs> and now, folks, I'd like this time to introduce you to our um, principal teacher here in the school, Michal Reardon. Michal is on the fiddle, and he has a few tunes selected for us, and he's going to start off with the march now, Scotland a Brave. Over to you, Michal. <laughs> Dancing like they always did, and sure you sing the old song and all below. You're ever a great woman for the song, Peg, and the dance. God bless you for it, and long may you carry on. All right, Peg. Hey. Thank you. Good girl. God bless you. Mrs. Neville. We're coming near the, near the end of the old program, but uh, it was great, wasn't it? It was very good. Yeah, it was great. Couldn't I be better. Enjoyed every minute of it anyway, and I hope you, I hope you all did. Oh, I did the best we've ever had. Just grand, just grand. Mm. So that's, that's the way now. I suppose okay. we'll. Um, We'll have to be planning another one now, fairly soon after this. We'll be looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> we will, we will. Well, there we are now. Thanks, Mrs. Neville. Chat away there now with Peggy again, and I'll move on along to Mrs. Kelleher. Jimmy didn't come at all today, would you? No, he didn't no. come at all. Oh, God, that's a pity now then, because Jim <laughs> could have been here too. But I suppose he's busy elsewhere. Well, he's at home. Yeah. Just at home for the evening. Right, ma'am. And you enjoyed the day, oh, I, I take good. it? Oh, very good. Very good. Very that's good, good. That's very just very nice good. to get out amongst the neighbours and that's for an old chat. And yeah. A bit of carry on. It is a course. Yeah. It is great. Thanks, Mrs. Kelleher, and uh, glad you enjoyed yourself. Oh, now, who's this woman? <laughs> Hello, Kathleen. How are you, girl? Over there. Kathleen Murphy, my neighbour over from Scahanel. And I finally got as far as you, Kathleen, because I think it's time for another song, don't you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What do you Never think? Well, we, should we have a song from Kathleen, do you think? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Say, yeah. That's more like it. That's more like it now. Now, so Kathleen is the grand singer, and uh, of course, Kathleen is a Kilcorny woman. So, well done, Kathleen, and uh, I'll, I'll give her the microphone now, and maybe you'll give us one of your great songs. You're a grand singer, Kathleen is. So, away with you, Kathleen. Just one verse, old <coughs> There's a home by the hills of Lantor, and it sweeps through the broad open sea, where the wild river dashes the foam, and the bulrushes wave in the breeze. Where the green ivy 
clings round the door, and the birds sweetly sing on each tree. To my darling, those notes they do pour, is My father have riches in store, both cattle and corn and wealth, by the prime land of lovely land or, where we have our youth and good health. I strolled out far to meet my own soul, unkindly she waited for me, by the prime land of lovely land or Good girl, Kathleen. Well done. You kept the flag flying for my side of the country anyway, over, huh? Lovely song, Kathleen, and a beautiful, sweet voice. Thank you, Kathleen Murphy, very much indeed. Now, another, another fine voice directly behind Kathleen Murphy is Mardi Deneen. Well, welcome, Mardi. How are you, girl? I didn't get around to talking to you at all today yet, but here we are now anyway. Good girl, Mardi. You're looking fine and, and great, and... Um, Enjoying the show, are you? Yes, Jim. Good. And... Uh, I was told there all through the week that you were practicing to give with a song. <laughs> Would that be right? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'd say. I, I think I had Kathleen Murphy at it over in the Hagerstable today. <laughs> there was fierce practicing going on all through the week. There were, there were. Marty, you'll give us an old verse, won't you? I will. Good girl, you are. No, please. There's one for County in Ireland. With memories so glorious and grand, where nature has lavished its bounty, is the orchard of Erin's green land. Sure, I love his cathedral and city, once founded by Patrick so true, and it bears in the heart of its the ashes of Brian Borum It's my own Irish home Far across the foam Although I've often left it In foreign lands to roam No matter County of Armagh. I've travelled three parts of the county to Newtown, Port Hill, Cushmaglen, around by the gap of Mount Norris, and home by Black Waters again, where the girls are so gay and so. None fairer than Nairn's go brown Ah, but where are the boys that can court them Like the boys from the county or man It's my own Irish home Far across the foam Although I've often left it in foreign lands to roam, no matter where I'll wander, true cities near or far, sure my heart is at home in all Ireland, in 
the county of Armagh. Miss Gahan here, our, our um, uh, school teacher here in Munaflok. Mary, how did you enjoy the day? Oh, it was great. It's very enjoyable. That's good. Very good. And the kids were said to you with all the music and everything. <laughs> it's there, there's a well, it's a talent around the arena. And you're great to put the effort and the time into to teach them and and keep them spoken with and everything and how you do it. No, well. So there you are, it's half of the job, sir, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. It is indeed, it's right. And then that's great. So you enjoyed all day anyway? No, it was very good. All you want now, I suppose, is to have the classroom nice and tidy for the morning. Well, I'm sure that will happen all right. <laughs> that will happen all right. We <laughs> yeah. won't let you down at all. Mm -hmm. Good girl, Mary. Delighted right, to, right. to have you. And uh, thanks for all the effort and the work you put into everything with, with the children. Thank you. Thanks a million. We're back now with uh, Danny Goggin. And, of course, Danny would be the, the man in, in charge here today as regards uh, age. Danny now would be our our oldest citizen here today. Isn't that right, Danny? And maybe you'll tell us how many years young you are. Um, 85. 85. 85 next May. 85 next May and going strong. Well, uh, not too bad anyway. I can't remember. I don't know. I hope that God will be like you when I'm that age. <laughs> oh, I ever see you. I don't know. No, you're the red stuff, Danny. Red stuff, you know. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't care to go with Samba. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I can't even say it would be... We will, we'll all join in and everything. First I'm thinking tonight of the old rusty bridge that bends o'er the murmuring stream was there, my dear, with your heart full of cheer, we spread neath the moon's a gentle beam. It was there I first met you, the light of your eyes. I walk in my heart a fun thrill Don't know far away Still my thoughts fondly stir To the old rusty bridge Was the beer Beneath it a thrill Gently to one city Around it the world loves to tread On a far away Still my thoughts fondly stir To the old rusty bridge by any love Good man, Danny! Hooray! Now, um, I'm on now with a gentleman here alongside me, Jack Healy from um, Mill Space. Uh, Jack, of course, is uh, an old brother-in-law of my own, and uh, you're welcome, Jack, to Mona Fluke today. Thank you. How you enjoy the day? Very good, very, very good, good, very good. To the great, to the great part of the country. Yeah, it is. Always, I eh? always. I always. Oh, all the time. Huh? So all the time. Yes. I, I came always from Mill Space, but. You came for drinking, <laughs> all the way to the rally. <laughs> to get the women. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the way things work out anyway, Jack. Yeah. You didn't have to travel as far as I did. No. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's just great anyway. So, as you said, to the fine part of the country. And uh, Jack and myself campaigned in England. We were together in England and we're together here again. And long may we continue to be together. And uh, great to have Jack. Of course, Jack always ready to have a song. Anywhere you meet Jack, he's always ready to give an old song and always wearing a smile. So I'm going to ask Jack to give us a song now without any further ado. <laughs> All right, Jack. Have a one ready. Right, give me some <laughs> Good man, yourself. And thanks for coming over to, to fill in the set for us today, Jack. Yeah, and you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm working here in Lasco and I've got a decent job. I'm carrying bricks and mortar and my pay is 15 bob. 
I rise up in the morning, I get up with the lark, and as I go walking down the street, you can hear the girls remark, hello, Patsy Fagin, you can hear the girls all cry, hello, Patsy Fagin, you're the apple of me eye, you're a decent boy from Ireland, there is no one can deny, you're a harem, scare a devil may care em. you're a decent Irish boy, and since I've left old Ireland, it's many years ago, I left my home in Antrim, where the pigs and treaties grow, but just since I've left old Ireland, it had always been my plan, to let the people see that I'm a decent Irish man, hello Patsy Fagan, you can hear the girls all cry, hello Patsy Fagan, you're the apple of me eye. You're a decent boy from Ireland. There is no one can deny. You're a harem, scare a devil may care em. You're a decent Irish boy. And if there is one amongst you who'd like to marry me, I'd take her to my little home across the Irish Sea. I'd dress her up in satin, and I'd please her all I can, and let the people see that I'm a decent Irish man. Hello, Patsy Fagan, you can hear the girls all cry. Hello, Patsy Fagan, you're the apple of me eye. You're a decent boy from Ireland, there is no one can deny. You're a harem, a scare em, a devil may care em. You're a decent Irish boy. Lovely. Good man, Jack. Well done there, Jack Healy there with Patsy Fagan. No better man for a song. Good man, Jack. Thanks. Right, well, this time the brick is after falling on me, so uh, they're looking for a song here, so I suppose I'll have to oblige. <laughs> Right, I'll give you an old Dusters Mount Matthew, the Flora McCroom song. How I long to remember those bright days of yore, with sweetly which I, I beguile. The friends that frequented my own cabin floor, and the comrades I loved as a child. How I long for to roam down Mount Matthew's green groves, and poached by the light of the moon. That spot of my birth, there's no equal on earth to Mount Massey, the flower of Macroom. So friends, come with me, and it's there you will see all the apples and cherries in bloom. Ah, to you I'll invite, where I first saw the light, to Mount Massey, the flower of Macroom. In the sweet summer time, when the season was fine, what fun would be there at the gate? The Colleen's would smile as they sat on the stile, with their sweethearts their love tales relayed. When dancing was over, we'd stroll in the park, each lad and his lassie in bloom. That spot of my birth, there's no equal on earth, to Mount Massey, the flower of Macroom. So friends, come with me, and it's there you will see all the apples and cherries in bloom. Ah, tis you I'll invite, where I first saw the light, to Mount Massey, the flower of Macroom. Ah, but now I must roam far away from my home, and cross o'er the wild raging sea. For to leave friends behind, both loving and kind, and the Colleen who dearly loved me. So fortune may smile far away from our isle, I should pray that the day will come soon, when I'll stray once again by that lovely domain, 
Down I see the flower of McCroom. So friends, come with me, and it's there you will see only apples and cherries in bloom. Ah, tis you I'll invite, where I first saw the light, to Mount Massey, the flower of McCroom. Well, I did, well, I did, well, I did. <laughs> Jim and Teresa this time, and they're going to do a double reel for us. So, away now with your double reel. Callahan again now, Tiger's going to give us another old song uh, towards the wind up of the evening, so over to Tiger and another verse of a song. All okay, right, Tiger? Right, Good man, thank you. Towards the carriage, all of one fine summer morning I strayed to view the green fields and trees affording great shade. And whom should I meet but a handsome and lovely young dame? And for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. When viewing this fair last year, it was in the evening so late. When standing a while outside, dance a one's gate. To welcome me kindly, this comely young lassie she came. And for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. Cross the ball in agree, you will see my love come to prayer. 
My heart fills with delight when the nice little girl I stare. A glass of my health, sure each time she is willing to drain. And for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. It was down by the lawn, and my darling go herding her swine. I'd love to be near and hear her singing so fine. Her notes were like music, and surely her voice was the same. And for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. And my love, she is neat and complete, and white as the snow. She is handsome indeed, her name I will not disclose. I'll tell you quite candid, your answers are all the time in vain. For for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. And if I own the room and the beautiful land by the lee, to own the fine farms from Blarney to Ballin agree, I'd give them a more this comely young lass to obtain. And for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. And when I and my girl together alone we had been, traversing the mountain from here to the top of Sea Bean, when kissing her sweet lips, I could not abstain. And for tons of bright gold, of course, I won't tell her name. And when I and my girl together in wedlock we are joined, the clergy will pay to carry out the ceremony so light. And when it's all over, it's then I'll explain. And without any gold, it's then I'll tell you her name. And I think we'll go back again now as we're still on the air. And we'll ask Con Desmond to give us another old song. Man Con. Had you ever been in love me by that had you have to say it? A married with a girl and her nose all out of place. Now I've had this experience and I have you all to know. I, I met her in the garden where the praises grow. She was just a sort of creature by that nature did intend. To walk right round the world my boys without a grace and bend. Nor did she wear it, senior, I have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praises grow. Now Peggy was a beauty, but not like a film star. For instead of paint and powder, she used linseed oil and tar. She wore no diamond necklace, but her father's daily bow. She was like a fallen angel where the praises grow. She was just a sort of creature by that nature did intend to walk right round the world, my boys, without a grace and bend. Nor did she wear it in year, I have you all to know. And I met her in the garden where the praises grow. Now her father was a blacksmith, he made her shoes for cows. He also made tin whistles and some cans for milking sows. He used to make some wooden legs, but that was long ago. And his customers all lost him where the praises grow. Now, Peggy, she is dead, and I'm very glad to say she's shoving up the daisies, miss the clover and the hay. Her troubles are all over, and I squandered all her dough. May the dear little Peggy, where the praise is for. Good man, Con. Thank you very much indeed, Con Desmond. Nice, right, but I think now if uh, we got together, for an old time waltz, maybe we'll all get in on the floor. For an old time waltz. And uh, to you, the viewers uh, watching in tonight, I hope you've enjoyed this program coming to you from Munafluk National School. And uh, 
we look forward to seeing you all again please god sometime in the near future so we hope you enjoy the program now from us here at monofluk slon and um, enjoy the program thank you <laughs> Uh, I suppose that was Peggy Bums' idea. <laughs> no, indeed, Jim. <laughs> Did you bring Jackie at all today? No. No, right. The two of us will be flying so for the day. I hope so. <laughs> well, old Peg. Always good for an old joke and a crack. And a song, of course, later on, with the help of God, maybe. If we'll have time. All right, Peg. Now we're back to a bit of music again now. And this time we have uh, third, fourth, fifth and sixth class from the Master's Room. And uh, they... Start off with Declan Kelleher over on the left, Joanne Spillan, uh, Marcella Kelleher, Gubnet Lyons, Deirdre Spillan, I'm getting on great so far, aren't I? Uh, forget your first name again. Geraldine Lyons, Bree Desmond, Bridget Kelleher here with her little keyboard, and Michael John Lyons on Tin Whistle again. So, third, fourth, fifth and sixth class now from the Master's Room. Away now, lads, with your selection of tunes.
Lovely. Good boys and girls. Great stuff all together. Great boys and girls. And of course, our thanks to the master, Michal Reardon, for preparing the lads. And so they don't be much preparing because the music goes on in Mona Fluke School. It's, it's part of the curriculum. So no bother to you at all. And thanks very much indeed, Michal, for your trouble. Well done. Right, well now here we have uh, Martin Manning and Martin is going to give us an old uh, few bells of a song and the song is entitled Long Long Before Your Time. So over to you now Martin, good man yourself. Oh you ask me why I look so sad on this bright summer's day and why the tears are in my eyes and I seem so far away Now sit yourself beside me love And put your hand in mine And I'll tell you all someone I loved Long, long before your time I'm sitting here and thinking of Those days so long ago when I was just a child like you And a girl I used to know Through fields of green we laughed and played And sang our merrily rhymes Oh, summer days were warmer than Long, long before your time Through childhood years our love did bloom and our hearts were just as one And we promised each eternal love In the church below the town We settled in this little house I was proud to call her mine Oh, we were young and happy then Long, long before your time one lovely year was all we had Until the sickness came That stole the roses from her cheeks My tears that fell like rain For nine long months she carried you And in the end she died She chose to go so you might live Long, long before your time So you ask me why I look so sad On this bright summer's day And why the tears are in my eyes And I seem so far away It's just she seems a lot like you When your eyes look into mine and you smile so much like she did Long, long before your time Yes, you smile so much like she did Long, long before your time Right, now we'd like to continue this time with uh, Government Lines to dance the hornpipe for us. Government. Thank you very much indeed now, Government Lions. Thank you for watching tonight's programme. I'm Kerry Callagher, wishing you good night.
Chris, I think, and at two o'clock today we got some, some, we got a great break for about two and a half hours, got our trashing done, and uh, like Colm said, a fantastic community effort, um, a lot of work put into it by Simon and uh, Sheila Foley, and again, as a great credit due to Jory O'Donovan as well for bringing his trasher here, and uh, to all the fellas that helped him out, so all in all, a fantastic day all round. I think we'd all second that. Colm, are you old enough to remember the trashings? Or I'm not, but sure, look, I'd have, I'd have heard tell of it. I'm afraid I am. <laughs> I am indeed. I had a few years of it, I suppose. Um, just about the tail end of it, yeah. Just hard work. I don't know if they're any great loss, but in a nostalgic way, you know, looking back on them, it's lovely to see them from this angle where there's no a hard day's work drawing, uh, drawing bags or cutting shaves or, I suppose, yeah, I used to be drawing the grain, I suppose, a lot of the time, right? And uh, as a young fellow, then throwing back the chaff and killing the, the rats and the mice like the, the song goes and uh, but just tough tough work but mind you the people were tough in those days as well like, and uh, there was a great old like that community effort everybody helped one another and there was great crack and there was a lot of old I suppose uh, light hearted carry on as well that would make it um, an, sort of an entertaining effort and uh, then sure the porter and the the, the food and everything was, 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 uh, was a big treat so uh, ah I just about remember it, all right. <laughs> Dennis, the same question to you. Are you old enough to remember the trashings? I barely remember the trashings. I remember coming from national schools and we going to the to the trashing. But unlike Cullum, there'd be no work involved. We'd get an old bottle of orange here and there and we'd see the, the, the senior lads that were working it and they're getting their bottle of stout and whatnot. And that's what we thought of the trashings at the time. That's what we thought was all about, was having an old bottle of stout, having a sandwich and whatnot. We really never understood it. And I suppose it's great to see it coming back now, and now we can appreciate what it was all about at the time. Colm, does it bring a tear to your eye? Pardon? Does it bring a tear to your eye today? <laughs> Almost, but not quite. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's lovely to look back and, and, and see it from a nostalgic point of view, but it was hard work, and it's nice to see the advance of, uh, of modern times and all that comes with it. And I think... Um, it's lovely to see the technological advances on the one hand, but it's a pity to see the community break up and the way people came together and helped one another. Uh, I think that aspect of it is a loss because everybody's so independent nowadays. It's a matter of, uh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm all right, Jack, we'll get, you'll get on with life. Whereas everybody helped one another before and neighbours depended on one another. And I think uh, that had an awful lot of, uh, of advantages and uh, there was a great old quality of life going with that. Dennis, nostalgia, regret, or reality, what do you think? I suppose, uh, I suppose, Joe, reality at the end of the day, it, uh, I mean, if we were depending on it nowadays, we wouldn't survive. Um, how would I put it, Joe? Time moves on, we have to move on with it. Like Colm says, nostalgia, grand, you know, and it's lovely to come to something like this. But um, if we had it today, I think we'd be going nowhere, going backwards. And the world we're living in, we must keep going forwards. But it's lovely to bring everyone together in a situation like this. And uh, I suppose great credit due to the people that keep the machinery, the tractors, the trashers, and do the business. So nostalgia, yes, but uh, there should be no going back. And finally, Colm, should we make it an annual event, do you think? Oh, definitely. I would say definitely. Um, anything that brings the people together like this and raises a few pounds for the parish, or a few euro or whatever it is, I think it's a, an admirable effort that should be kept on if at all possible. And sure, we'll all row in and do our little bit any way we can. And um, I mean, even just bringing the people together here for a, an enjoyable evening, I think that in itself, not to mention the money aspect of it. Um, so, absolutely. And Dennis, your thoughts? Oh God, I agree 100%. I think it should be kept. And I think the stronger and stronger it would get. And I mean, it is great as well for the, for the older people of the community. It brings back memories to those people. I mean, for the younger people, they have a great day out and they have different side shows and whatnot. But um, yes, I think it should be kept. And it's great to bring a local community like we have here in uh, Torelton together and have a great day out. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, Dennis. And now here beside me, I have Michael Ford. And Michael, that's a strange piece of machinery I see in front of me here. What exactly is it and where did you get it? Well, I tell you, it's a homemade thing. And there's bits and pieces of every tractor in it, really. 
and the engine is a bus engine and it's turbocharged and intercooled so she develops 210 horsepower you know so the bonnet is homemade it's three uh, three mil steel the whole thing the chassis are uh, i think 12 mil the back wheels are uh, zetter crystal front axle zetter and some of the rest of it is Ford and there's different things in it, you know. It's pretty much a, a homemade scene, you know. And Michael, tell me, is this the only vintage model you have? No, I have cars and so on, like Mustangs and Buicks and Chevys and things that way, you know. And how did you develop your interest in that, Michael? Um, I suppose it happened simple enough, really, because I had a 2.8 1984 Granada which was a car I really, really liked, and it was a gear, and when I decided to change, I see that there was really nothing to change to. The modern stuff is so cheap looking, so disposable looking, and so on. So one day, accidentally, I went to the fourth thing in, um, near Clan. I've just forgotten the name of the place, um, where the Ford Museum is, and there was vintage stuff there and so on, and, uh, Next thing, I said, right, Monday morning, I decided then I'd try for a Mustang. So about nine months later, I ended up with a Mustang. And then I said, that might be enough now for a while. But as it turned out, the disease developed and it's carrying on from there. So I have about six things now at the moment. And Michael, from a pure ignoramus, what would that be worth now? I suppose it's hard to say. I couldn't even put a value or a price on it really. It is quite unique in that it would be the only one in the world. So it's so hard to put a price in it, but I'll tell you what it cost me. I put four years of work at night time into it and eight and a half thousand pounds. That's what I put into it. My goodness. You know? And she's going now, it's fully finished with about five years. And you know? Do you take it around to various uh, shows? Seldom enough, not that often, but this being near to my place and we say if three or four or five miles are a little bit more I take it, but otherwise I don't, you know. And Michael, just purely for the interest of our viewers and listeners, what else have you, if you could list them off? Well, I'd have a 66 GT fastback Mustang, a 5 litre V8, which was actually built on a Sunday, the 24th of July. <laughs> And I have a Buick, which is 85, and a Chevrolet truck, which is 79. And I have a, I have a V12 XJS um, Jaguar. And I have this old Granada that I spoke about while ago. I'm restoring that at the moment, you know. So that's about it at the moment, it's, I think. And it's enough, really. <laughs> at the same, Trelton, beat that in one shot of a bowl. Michael Ford, thanks very much. No problem. Thank you. I don't like... <laughs> okay, here we have the vintage and hopefully it's on its way shortly. Okay, first of all, we've car number 21, and it's Oliver Ford, and he's a Honda Shadow 1999. Oh, it's a motorbike, sorry. And we're just going to present them with a little something for bringing their vintage. No, no.
Swanston and it's a Ford Escort van, 1975. Next we have number nine and it's pa Pauline Brennan Bandon and it's a Rover, 1971. Four. 